Hey everyone, so today we're going to continue off on that little sunglasses journey of the different lens colors. Today we're going to dive into the browns, and this is always kind of a fun one for me. I personally prefer brown lenses, but as you'll see, there are a lot of different variations of brown, and it's kind of like gray where it's, uh, most people still call it a gray, but it could be something really very different. Uh, the browns, we have a lot of that same thing. Believe it or not, I specifically chose these colors for the background to deal with that. Let's have some fun and we'll dive into it. So I've got a fistful of brown lenses. We're gonna go play with at least one of these out in the real world. I'll probably stick to just the regular brown for now, and then we'll kind of segment out some of these others in future videos. So I do wanna focus on kind of the generic benefits and some of the negatives associated with brown lenses in glasses, sunglasses, whatever, because obviously these days you can see anything as dark or as light as you want. You can go the full sun 94, you can do like a 40% fashion tint. And a lot of times we do find these browns mixed with other colors to create a nice soft fashion tint that's still wearable, gives some sun protection, and do a few other little things there. It'll be part of the gradient section, but. Anyways, let's, let's not get into the fashion tents just yet. Let's focus right on that brown. I've got too many darn lenses here and you'd think I would have sat them where I could quickly and easily see which was which, but we all know I am not that good, right? <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of your standard brown. You'll see with greens, we get a nice little pop there with the reds. You get almost a gray shift with it or with the purples, not <laughs> reds. That's not red, you're not colorblind, I'm just an idiot. So what's cool with the browns is they really serve to be a good contrast enhancer. So a lot of times you'll see these mixed with yellows or roses, things along those lines to really accentuate certain colors in certain circumstances. Honestly, as far as a driving lens goes, I am hard pressed to choose anything other than a brown, except in very, very special circumstances. The key there being we can tune it with some of the other underlying colorways. Some of them are specifically tuned filters to begin with, and that's just kind of how that goes. But you can also tune the colors a little bit more with mirrors over the top. And again, I don't want to go too deep into this just yet. I want to focus on just the benefits of the browns. But that's why I love it for driving. Don't think it tends to work as well, but you do have to be more careful with golf because a lot of the courses may have a ton of greenery around them. So if you've got all this foliage everywhere, you know, you're playing in a heavily forested area, I know a lot of our courses here are like that, then you wind up almost being overwhelmed in a brown lens, especially one that's got more of the yellow undertones to it because it adds a lot of punch and contrast to that green, but it also does wash out the blues of the sky. So you can see the ball better as it's traveling the longer distances, but you might lose it in the woods if you're not that great. It's harder to track because there is so much contrast on the green, right? The great thing with that though is because of the contrast on the green, you can read it better, which again is a good benefit. Now, if you are playing on those more heavily forested fields, you probably want to go with a gray just so it's not that edge or and again, I'm trying to skirt it a little bit. You can actually pair one of the green mirrors with a nice brown lens. I know Revo does this in their evergreen lens. That's why I love to send golfers around here just because it works well. It does take a little bit of that edge off the green because it's reflecting away some of the green spectrum with the green mirror, and that's how that works. Subtractive reflection, we love it. It's just another way to tune the lenses. Now, <laughs> this guy this guy right here. So this is one of those that's got that very soft rose undertone to it. You can't quite pick it up here, unfortunately, unless we're on that more purple side. So it's a little tough to show on camera. That one, we'll get back to it when we do the rose lenses because it is really, really good to show that off. Now, as far as other situations where the browns with the yellows, and I'm sorry, that's I'm trying to find the brown with more of the yellow, that is not it. That's the standard brown again. Too many lenses, right? So with the yellow undertones, there we go. 
that's the one. So the yellow undertones are really nice on hazy, overcast days because it helps cut kind of through that glare. Again, it cuts down more of that blue light diffusion. This is my favorite go-to for hazy, rainy, just overcast situations like we have today. It's just clouds everywhere. There's not really a lot of rain happening, but it's just hazy and blue diffused light and it's kind of tough to see. Yeah, well, first of all, because it's just glare everywhere when it's like that, right? There's no intense light in any one place, but all of the light is everywhere. So it can be a lot. Now, I know a lot of fishermen love the browns. I'm not gonna get into that. That's just really something I'm not super familiar with or super comfortable in. Now, I can tell you which colors are gonna work in which circumstances, what Muriel can wanna combine with it. But as far as actual, I've worn it, this is what happens. Yeah, not so much. So I'll pass that on to those guys. Now, with the browns, Oh, good Lord. Yeah, there we go. So back to the regular brown. This one we're gonna take out with us and kind of go over how it works in a few different situations. Now you'll find one underlying thing here is I am gonna stick to more of the polarized lenses for the camera and the recording purposes. That's not because I like polarized lenses more. If you've been around the channel long, you know that's not the story. But camera sensors do. Camera sensors love the hell out of polarized lenses. It just makes them work better. So that's what we're gonna use on the camera. <laughs> uh, sorry, it is what it is, right? Fortunately, this one's convenient. We have our polarized line axis right there so we can get it all lined up nice and neat and exactly where it needs to be. Other situations that I do recommend a brown lens for and this one's a little bit more interesting. So skiing, it tends to work really well. Same situation, you've got a ton of light, a ton of white, and, and yes, that was not an error. I did mean a ton of light and a ton of white because you've got more reflected glare coming up from the ground. Typically it is either snowy, hazy, you do you get bright sun sometimes, and then a gray can be a little bit better, but just depends on how much light you need to block out there but they make some really, really dark browns too. That you're not gonna find in grays without getting a strong red shift. So that's something else to be aware of. But as far as the skiing, it tends to work really good. In fact, the, uh, the Ski Links lens Varnay makes designed specifically for skiing, right? That is a yellow green lens, primarily yellow, a little bit of green, kind of shifts the overall spectrum a little bit more brown. That one you lose a lot of color perception with, so you do have to be careful of it. I do not recall if it meets the red-green standard for driving, but nah, most people don't like it for driving just because it is very, very, <laughs> you lose almost all the colors. Everything becomes very yellow. It's weird and hard to explain, but that's what you get. So with the brown lenses, let's get out there, check out a few different situations with these. Let you see how it looks out in the real world because I could sit here and ramble all day. You probably don't care. You're sick of me already, right? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But you do probably know this is what I wear the most of. So I am happy to take it out in the real world because if you have seen my Porsche sunglasses that I wear all the time, you can't even see the blue mirror on here, but it is a nice high contrast. We've got that little bit of a brown, a little bit of a rose to it. And then you've got that kind of blue purple mirror over the top just to fine tune it a little bit more. Takes the edge off the sky. I can wear this in pretty much any situation. Eh, maybe not quite indoors because it just looks a little dark for indoors, right? And I've got 60% gray for that. Let's just switch those out. But that brown, I leave this in it 95, 96% of the time, probably more than that just because it's what I like, it works, it's very universal. Now I said in the other video with the grays, I always recommend gray as your starting point. I'm the exception that proves the rule, right? I'm gonna prefer the brown in everything. That's what I have in 90% of my pairs. I actually just ordered my second gray lens, third, third gray sun lens ever last week. And it's just because I like that color with that frame and that's all there is to it. Nothing else, nothing else to see there. I still will not pick gray every single time. Very rarely, actually. Greens though, that's fun. We'll get into those next week. For now, 
check out this lens in some of the real world footage and we'll see and let you see. I will control the lighting a little bit with this one. On the grays I did as well and you'll see that gradation a little bit in that video because in order to do it, yeah, you don't really get the color shift in a good neutral gray, but you do get the brightness shift. The problem there is the brightness shift is more on a camera than what our eyes actually see. So I did have to mess with it a little bit in between. So it looks like the autocorrection, but it is not the autocorrection. That is me correcting it very quickly to what it looks like to the eye. I will do that with this one as well. I'm going to maintain the color temperature. I'm going to set it at 5600. It's overcast today. I might not be quite at 5600, but it will be set at a fixed temperature so that when we put the brown lens on it, you will see the color shift that the brown lens creates. You may have to tweak the brightness a little bit. I'll figure it out, but I'll get it balanced really well so you can really get the experience of just a clear open view versus wearing that darker brown lens. And then we'll play with some of these others. And then we'll get into greens and then we'll get into the really fun oddball colors that are very difficult to find and <laughs> don't ask me which, how, where to get those other colors when we get there because you're really gonna hunt. But yeah, anyways. I'll catch you guys next time. Check out the footage. Let me know your feedback. If this helped you, let me know. If it didn't, let me know. You guys are good at the let me know stuff. <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Take care.